Hey everyone, we're at Gigabyte Suite now at CES 2019, and Gigabyte has a lot of stuff to show. They have they have a whole wall behind me, and then there's a, another wall in the other room. So we're going to try and go through almost all the stuff here today, but I think the big one to start with is probably going to be the RTX 2060 video cards, because they just launched, or at least to the press. Sorry, you can't have one yet. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermaltake's Core P3 case. The Core P3 is one of the most unique cases on the market. It can serve as an open air standing chassis, a test bench in vertical or horizontal orientation, or as a wall mounted showcase PC. The Core P3 now comes with a five millimeter thick tempered glass panel for its side, but keeps the front, top and back open for air. The Core P3's versatility as a display piece, test bench, or standard desktop is reinforced by its price of roughly $110 on Amazon. You can learn more at the link in the description below. The cards that are on display here, a couple models. So in order of price, we don't have firm pricing numbers yet, but just in, in terms of the stack, how they'll line up, the 2060 OC, follows or, uh, Gig Gigabyte's traditional naming scheme. So 2060 OC kind of at the low end, we're not clear on if it'll come to the North American market, but maybe not. And if it doesn't, what will come to the North American market is the Windforce OC. Uh, so this is a dual axial cooler design. It's pretty straightforward. We know it's a different PCB and VRM than previously. The PCB measurements are the same, but the VRM components are different. I just, I don't know what exactly those components are today. So we're gonna try and find that out for you uh, for separate coverage on what MOSFETs they're using, what voltage controller, all of that stuff. So not clear on what that is just yet, but it is a dual axial cooler. It's got a couple of heat pipes and then a pretty simple heat sink. So this is going to be a more affordable option. The gaming OC is a triple fan design. So a triple axial, a uh, single eight pin on both of these cards following the 2060 spec, pretty straightforward there. And uh, I mean, it's it's just a slightly higher end model. It's got a backplate like most of the others these days. And we'll just have to wait and see what the uh, the VRM component specification is. Hopefully that will stay in place. So that's the gaming OC. This one I think will interest more people because small. So this is the mini ITX OC. And you've seen these cards before. We use a similar card to this, the 1070 model in our mini ITX test bench. And uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's a small card. And actually we we're just talking with another vendor about how small cards in the 20 series that are also two slot, pretty hard to find. So I think Zotac's coming out with one, but we haven't seen too many just yet. And the problem here is that as the GTX 10 series dies and gets phased out, you're gonna be left with kind of a gap in coverage of mini ITX models where people are waiting for ITX models, but can't buy the 10 series because it's gone and are waiting for the 20 series to come out in ITX. So that's the start of that one. Uh, but that's their video cards. We don't have a ton of details on them just yet. We already reviewed the 2060. You can check that for performance for the basics of what the silicon can do. And then as far as what the cooler can do, we'll check back with you later uh, once we can actually test them. I'll briefly mention this. So there's memory, we've showed this, uh, we showed this actually at Computex where Gigabyte did something kind of interesting. They had dummy modules. So it's, uh, at the time it was a new concept for them. And it was, you could buy a kit of four if you are OCD about your memory slots and you want all four to be filled. And then two of them are fake. So it just brings down the cost while allowing you to still have the higher capacity for two sticks, but filling all four slots if you are uh, neurotic, we'll say, about that kind of thing. So all they've shown here that's different from previously, 3600 megahertz kit and a 4000 megahertz kit. And those are CL roughly 19, let's see, 3600, 18, 19, 19 for the timings, 4000, 19, 20, 20, and they are Hynix c die memory. Um, the biggest challenge, of course, with memory is the getting on QBLs from motherboards. Gigabyte happens to make a lot of motherboards, so it works out there. Uh, we have not worked with the memory yet, but they've been upgraded to higher frequencies. If that's something you were interested in, but from the look side, the interesting part, I guess, is the dummy modules, which we showed before. Let's move on to the tower cooler and the SSD. So this one, I don't need notes for this. This is pretty, this is my domain. So 163 millimeters tall for the tower cooler. So in terms of clearance, you miss all the 150 millimeter cases for the, the window to board height, but you still hit most of the other cases that are in the mid tower, upper mid tower range in terms of sizing. So 163, if you, you kind of look at it while it's spinning, it looks like the fans are facing the same way. No, it's not a mistake. Uh, this one is blowing that direction. And then that one's just a reverse fan blade design. So it's a back swept design, you would call it typically. So it looks the same from the outside, but it's back swept. So it's pulling air, pushing it out of the back of the case. And this is called the uh, ATC 800. 
So it's the Aorus Tower Cooler, I think is what that stands for, 800 model. Um, again, TBD on price, don't know yet. TBD on availability, this one's a bit further out than some of the other products we've looked at, like the video cards, which are on the immediate horizon for roughly January 15th or something around, those, uh, around that time based on NVIDIA's own release timing. But for the cooler, it's a little while out. It is two 120mm fans, it's ARGB, and uh, I, there is a temp and RPM reader here with a bar, so I'm thinking maybe that will progress and show some kind of basically uh, like Windows progress complete bar, except for temperature and RPM, but we don't know just yet. So that's a cooler. It's a big air cooler. Uh, below it, under the video card, is a PCIe SSD. These are using a Fizon controller. It's the 12E controller, which is pretty new, uh, if not brand new. And these will be coming in a one terabyte or 512 gigabyte model for the PCIe card, the add-in card, as opposed to the NVMe M.2 stick, just the stick, which will be 512 or 256 gigabytes for capacity, but it's the same Fizon controller uh, for both. So, um, and also it's a pretty heavy duty shroud and housing with RGB LEDs, which is what most people want at this point, I suppose. Uh, although Kyle did tweet a photo about RGB LEDs, and maybe we'll find that and put it on the screen now. I think that covers most of the, the core stuff here. I do want to point out a motherboard. We'll walk back over this way because uh, this was, it's not new technically. It came out a couple weeks ago, but it's the Z390 Aorus Extreme Water Force. In terms of VRM and PCB, it's literally an Aorus Extreme. It's the same motherboard, which we liked, and Buildzoid gave it high praise on our channel. Uh, so that's a, a ringing endorsement from him to get any amount of praise. So that's been modified now to have, well, it's, it's a water force water block. So it's just got a uh, pretty much full coverage block here. And it's been out for a couple weeks, but if you hadn't seen it, it does look kind of cool. And if you're into open loop, it might be worth looking into. I don't know if we'll be testing this one. Uh, we have a standing offer. It's just a matter of, is there interest? So if there is interest, let me know in the comments so that I can, I can confirm that and get it in the office for testing. And there's one more thing. I almost forgot it. The monitor. So not in this room. We'll have B-roll for this one. The Gigabyte monitor is new for them. Uh, this is in Gigabyte's effort to expand their product lineup into other verticals as well. And the monitor is called, let's get this out of the way first, the Aorus Display 27QD. So AD27QD is the name, which is actually one of the more forgiving monitor names on the market. And it's got a couple specs we can give. Uh, the more important 27 inch IPS, 144 hertz, it is 1440p, uh, DCIP is 98%, FreeSync as well, particularly relevant because NVIDIA is now actually supporting that, although they've renamed it and uh, appropriated the naming or the, the product. The monitor has built-in power, so if, if you don't like power bricks, that's a marketing point now, I guess, is to put it back in the monitor, which we actually prefer the, the power to be in the monitor, not in a brick that sits on the carpet and gets hot, but uh, it's gotten so far the other direction where they need to be thin that people have forgotten you can put them in the monitor, so Gigabyte has now done that. Uh, you can kind of add on some, we'll call them cheating options for games, which actually are pretty cool. Uh, so some of this stuff has been done before, some of it's more interesting. For example, counters or timers, you can, through the software, we have footage of this, you can set a timer. So if you know, for example, uh, an opponent's ability in a MOBA will refresh every 90 seconds or every five minutes or whatever, you can set it so that when you hit the hotkey, it'll just start an on-screen timer that is done through firmware on the monitor, so it should bypass game anti-cheat systems. I don't care about how you feel about this ethically or in terms of how the game works, but it's, it's pretty cool otherwise. So um, like I said, it's been done before in some ways, but this combines a whole bunch of stuff in one. So a uh, timer pops up on the screen. You can see exactly when the opponent's ability should recharge and or cool down. Uh, other stuff, you can put a reticle on the screen and uh, there's a couple other things in there too, like some adapt adaptive noise reduction with a mic built into the monitor that listens to ambient noise, cancels it out in your mic noise as it's all uh, processed through the software, which is mostly, for example, for streamers. I think that covers most of it. One millisecond, if I didn't say that, it's got uh, RGB on the back, pivot, swivel, tilt are all built in, and then uh, OSD built into the firmware, so games like Destiny 2 can't block it out, and HDR 400. So that covers it. That's the Gigabyte Suite at CES 2019. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more, as always. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly. I'll see you all next time.